Hello folks, um, I think we're all good to go here live. Um, I'm just doing it, just doing a few checks here. Um, so you're very welcome along to another live session where I will be um, updating you on some guidelines about the driving test and I'll also be giving you some tips and advice on driving um, whether you're learning or whether you're preparing for a test or whatever um, whatever stage you're at so you're very welcome along um, it's great to have you I'm going to be um, just starting with a few announcements now about um, driving and about the current um, guidelines so um, so we already have a few people in there. No name. Hello, Melvin Rebello. Hey, how are you, Maxon? Maxon O'Flynn. Hi, Dane. Dave Witt. And so to. Uh, so a few just quick announcements first. Um, if the country goes to level four, um, lockdown or level four restrictions, the driving tests will still go ahead because they are deemed an essential service. I actually wasn't quite sure about that the last time, but. I was going on previous evidence, but the updated the updated uh, information is that even on level four, driving tests are considered essential services, so they will keep going ahead. Now, what happens at level five, if we go to level five, I don't know. I'll have to update you on that, but they're just following the guidelines of NEFIT and the HSE. So time will tell. Uh, we will see how, we, all we can do is wait and see how, uh, how that plays out. Um, the next one then is about learner permit expiries. So if your learner permit has um, expired, don't worry, you still have a four-month extension. And that four-month extension is in addition to a previous four-month extension you would have got back in March and April. So if you go on to the NDLS website, you will see a really useful calculator for, for um, judging when your learner permit is actually out of date. Remember, you can renew your learner permit or your driver's license three months before it expires. So it's good to get ahead of the game on that. Um, so yeah, four months. So for example, if your learner permit goes out of date on the 30th of October this year, that means you, you can just add four months. So what's it, November, December, January. So it's, it's good till February, okay? It's good till February. However, if it goes out of date on the 1st of November or the 2nd of November, 3rd of November, there is no extension, okay, as things stand. So until the 31st of October, your learner permit has a four-month extension. If you have any questions or if you have any queries on that, I'll do my best to answer them, but the NDLS website is the place to go. It's a really good website. Uh, it's it's easy to navigate. They have a great calculator tool. They have a great page for FAQ frequently asked questions so check out the NDLS page um, for that but four month extension for learner permits and seven months for full license holders as well so the next announcement then let's see what we have next on the list here um, sorry I'm just making a little adjustment here so over 70s yes now this may not apply to a lot of people who are kind of tuning in and commenting and asking questions but if you're over 70 you, generally speaking, will not be required to attend in person to renew your full license. The RSA or the NDLS sorry, will, will send out a pack to you that you can do it from home. So you can just fill out the application form, insert a medical um, report if, if, if required, and just send it in by post. That's to, to help avoid um, older, more vulnerable people having to go out. Okay, So over 70s don't have to attend. But if an over 70 person has made an appointment to attend, the NDLS, they should cancel that appointment uh, so somebody else can avail of it. Okay, so the next announcement then, let's see. So we've got the permit extensions, we've got level four, we've got the over 70s. Um, UK and Northern Ireland licenses. So from the 31st of the 12th of this year, if you're driving on a UK or North of Ireland like full license you're going in Ireland you're going to have to exchange that for an Irish license okay uh, 55 euro is the cost for a full license 35 for a learner permit but the UK and Northern Ireland licenses licenses will not be valid after the 31st of December this year so if you know anybody's on a on a license from the north or the UK get them to swap it for an Irish one to the best of my knowledge the UK are still recognizing European licenses and an Irish license is a European one, so there's no issue if you're if you've an Irish license in the UK or the North, but 
If you have a UK license and you're a resident in Ireland, get it changed to an Irish one, okay? Next announcement then, let's see, folks, where are we? Where are we? Uh, yes, just to clarify on face masks, okay? If you're doing a driving test and you're asking about face masks, okay, you have to be able to wear a face mask for your driving test, okay? Um, I just got an update from a reliable source that if you're doing a test and you're not able to wear a face mask, there will be no test. The tester will not do the test with you and they will have to rearrange it for a time, sometime in the future, when face masks are not um, mandatory. So just bear that in mind. I didn't have the full information on that in the last live stream. I was relying on old information. So the most up-to-date, uh, most reliable information is you have to be able to wear a face mask for the test. If, if you're not able to wear a face mask or you have any issues or symptoms of COVID, all that kind of stuff, make sure you contact the RSA and let them know either about symptoms or that you can't wear a face mask, okay? They need to know because it'll cancel the test to another time and somebody else will be able to benefit from that cancellation then, okay? I see there's some comments in there. I'll get those comments now in a sec. I see Maxton, Dylan, Cat on the Ridge, a few of those. Just going to get to those now soon. So yeah, that's on face masks, folks. And just just, just ask me any questions on that in, in the comments there and I'll, and I'll try to clarify. So the next announcement then, Yes, another one about the driving test. So again, I was relying on all information in the last live stream, apologies. If you are, if English is not your first language, um, before these COVID restrictions, you were allowed an interpreter who would come in and interpret the questions and the road signs and things like that. But the interpreter would not be allowed to do the practical, sit in the practical test with you. That's no longer allowed, okay? If English is not your first language or Irish, and you need an interpreter, um, it's not going to be allowed during the current uh, COVID-19 COVID, uh, restrictions, okay? So no interpreters while the COVID is ongoing. Okay then, so I think that's the, the main announcements uh, done there then. Um, yes, so let's get back to the comments then. So we had got down as far as Maxton, uh, Dylan, GLC, um, Hello there, Dylan. Uh, hi, Dan. Just a quick question. Do you know, will the test still be... Oh, yeah. Um, my inst will, Do I know, will the test still be running in level five? My instinct would say no, but I know that driving tests, driving testers are considered an essential service. So I don't know. They're still waiting on advice from Neffet and the HSE, but they are certainly running in level three. They will be running in level four. Level five... I would think not, to be honest with you, but, you know, I will have to wait and see how, uh, until we get closer to that, if that, if and when that happens. Uh, so I can't give you a definite answer on that, but I, I will let you know as soon as I know something in a future video or in the next live stream. Um, Cat on the house, hello from Cork. Yes, Cork, the name Corkig, meaning marsh. So Cork was named that because it was built on marshland. That's the Irish word Corkig comes from. So a bit of information there for you. Cat on the house, hello. Uh, good to see you. Dylan, never mind my tear in two weeks. Fingers crossed. I think you mean your test in two weeks. So best of luck in your test, Dylan, in two weeks. Any questions, give me a shout. Uh, Maxton offline. Uh, I know it will be too much to cover in this live stream, but you would you be able to do a video on things you need to know when buying a car and how trustworthy is a car off Dundee? Yes, that's a good idea for a future video it was something i was thinking of doing i was i was thinking about the channel a lot over the last year during during covid and seeing like maybe i might i don't know i might branch into things like that like buying a car things you need to watch out for maybe test driving certain cars um it's a thing i i i would like to do i would certainly consider it and i think max and that's a, a very good idea for a for a future video um, you just need to be careful when you're buying anything, whether it's done deal or anywhere else. I would always advise you to try have someone with you, an extra person, you know, um, who can give you another opinion, who can see things that you might not see, particularly if they're involved in the motor trade, like a panel beater, spray painter, mechanic, things like that. Uh, but definitely, um, uh, Max, a great idea for a future video there, yeah. Um, yeah, Dylan, there are clarifying you meant test, yeah. Martina M., Hello, Dane. Thank you for your videos. They are very helpful. You are most welcome. Um, I'm doing my driver test on Tuesday in Gorey. You're not too far away from me then. Have you any tips, especially with mini roundabouts? 
Um, at mini roundabouts, Martina, and the best luck to you in the test. I would just be careful. You can't categorize mini roundabouts as all the same. So, for example, you might have a mini roundabout that is kind of broad, slightly wide, and very open. You know, you can see loads. And that'd be reasonably straightforward, re reasonably simple. Like, you just have to slow down, make sure you do your looks. But then you see, you're going to have mini roundabouts then, which might be on a slight, say, uphill. And you could be very, very blinded on the right, like from with a wall or, or a trees or a hedge or something like that. So, the, the mini roundabouts... It's not a one-size-fits-all. Some mini roundabouts are nice and straightforward, and you know they do keep traffic flowing. They're the best things about some of the best things about roads is having roundabouts because they're great for keeping traffic flowing. But what you need to do there, Martin, is differentiate between your simple standard mini roundabout and your tricky tough mini roundabout. Feel free to drop into first gear. Just edge up if you can't see. Don't just don't just barge out and 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 you know come out like pull out when when you can't see properly. Take it easy, uh, creep out if you have to. Uh, the first indicator is the important one, so if you're taking the second exit to the right, try to get the right indicator. You can sacrifice the left indicator if your steering is going to suffer. Uh, nobody's going to see it anyway. Um, so yeah, just, just plan ahead. Try your best to diagnose, is it a standard, open, kind of reasonably straightforward roundabout, or is it a bit tricky, is it a bit blind? And you have to kind of, if you differentiate that, and then you can take appropriate action. Brian Baru by 2030, yeah. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, hopefully by 2030, good things will happen for all of us. Melvin Rebello, do they provide masks as well at the centre? Yes, yes they do. They will provide you with a mask at the test centre. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they'll insist on you wearing that mask. Um, but you will have to wear a mask, as I said. If you can't wear a mask, there will be no test. Robin, um, Robin Byrne. Has his test in Gory next Thursday, another Gory test. And one of the reverse around the corner places has a drain. Can I go into the drain or graze the drain or do I have to swing around it? Thanks. You see, it's it's I don't see any problem with going into that drain. If it's a particularly big one, I would advise you to um steer clear of it. Uh to the best of my knowledge, I, I don't think it's you're gonna get faulted hugely one way or the other but if it's a certainly if it's a big one and it goes deep and it's going to cause a bit of a bit of a bump on the car i would try to avoid it i actually i actually like when i see drains uh kind of on the corner because i think if you've spotted them beforehand and then you go and start the corner and reverse around it the fact that you've spotted it and you've made a note of it means you've got a good idea of where the back of the car is so like if the back of the car goes into the drain or as you said grazes the drain that might be a good uh, little tip so you kind of know where you are. So make a note of where the drain is. Like if the drain is like where the bend starts, that might be a good tip so you can kind of start steering. But look, it, it's, it all depends. I, I don't think testers are... I've never had a tester... I don't think I've ever had a tester or an examiner say anything to me about avoiding drains on the reverse around the corner. But if it's a big one, try avoid it. But I wouldn't get too worried about it. As long as you're looking behind you, taking a slow, yielding to traffic, you should be grand. Uh, Michael DC, hi Dan. With regards to how grade twos are given, if I say gear down to second gear for a corner and the car chugs, that I like jumps, I presume you mean a small bit, is that an automatic grade two? If it happens four times, is that gonna mean a fail? Uh, yes, yeah, sort of. You see, if the car chugs or jumps or jerks when you go from third to second or fourth to second you know it's it's always going to chug or jerk a little bit that's just part of the it's just part of the mechanics of the car you know it's it's, it's you, you can't completely get rid of it but you have to try and minimize it that means by just keeping on the brake a little bit depending on the hill of course so braking and coming off the clutch nice and slowly so you have a smooth transition into gear the answer to your question, Michael, is it depends on how much you jump and jerk by. Like, if it's only a little jump, the tester will probably overlook it. If it's kind of a little more than a little jump, but not, not like you're, you know, not, not like excessive, it may be a grade one or grade two. The answer, it all depends on how jumpy and how jerky it is. So, in order to avoid jumps and jerks on the car, try not to go down to second gear too far away from the point at which you turn, okay? 
try go to second gear a little bit later and it might just help you then to um to kind of keep the gear changes smoother you know um but you're, you're right though if, if you do get four marks in a row so four marks on exactly the same thing is kind of marked horizontally uh the, those four marks in a row will lead to a fail because you've done uh the one thing wrong too many times if that makes sense but it's a tricky one to answer because like i don't know your style of driving so but you know, if you just try and minimize the jumps, you should be fine. Uh, Luke, uh, let me see now. I'm just going to get that comment there now. Um, so hoping to stay alive here, folks, until 4.30, okay? Uh, so I'll be live for approximately 90 minutes, okay? So 4.30, I will have to sign off by half four. Um, okay, so just getting back to the comments here then. Um, I'm just going to find where I was there. Yeah, Luke, Lukman Ayodeje Bazari. I have booked for my test but I have not got a date yet and I'm a healthcare worker. How can I schedule over the phone because the email I sent wasn't attended? I would ring the RSA and uh, ring them directly to um, find out that because um, if you're a healthcare worker you're 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 working in a, in a crucial industry they will try and prioritize you okay so um, let me just check my phone for the number of the rsa now uh, i like i know you can i know you can google this but the, it's the, the, you're better off ringing the rsa up in uh, they're based up in county uh, county mayo i think it's balana and um ring them directly and they will do their best to try and facilitate a sooner or quicker date for a healthcare worker. 1890-406-040, okay? 1890-406-040. Ring them directly, explain your situation, and I'm pretty sure if, if you're a healthcare worker, they'll try and get you on a priority list, okay? And the best of luck to you. Uh, Luke, man, I also sent an email a month ago. I, lads, I wouldn't be relying on emails getting responded, to be honest with you. I'd say they're short-staffed enough as it is. I'd say there's a lot of people working from home. Um, emails, you, you know, you've, you've got more control if, you, if you're on the phone, if you make a call, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's my advice. Uh, I was given a point recently for driving without a sporting driver. Yeah, you have to be very careful, folks, on that. Uh, you, you are risking prosecution penalty points there if you drive alone. It's not like it was years ago. The guards are clamping down on that now and they're taking their, their seasoned cars and all that stuff. Don't be driving unaccompanied. Um, Billy Dunny 91 I rang the RSA, and I am also an essential worker, and I got mine within two weeks. So there you go, Billy Meal Flower. Fair thanks for that comment. Uh, so that, that goes to show, folks, that, you know, they will try and facilitate you within, within the um, possibilities that they're allowed to. So ring up, let them know, and they will hopefully get you a quicker um, test date. Contact on the phone, yeah. Olivia McSweeney, um, I've already failed my test in Finglas. Uh, sorry to hear that. If I fail my second test in Finglas, should I try my third test in Finglas or in a test centre down the country with a higher pass rate? Well, you see, Olivia, you know, why Why are you failing? Like, is it, is it really down to geography or are you, are you getting enough lessons? Are you prepared enough? Are you taking note of what the tester says? I don't I don't buy into all this uh, geography like you know some people think you can you can do it do it in a certain place and you might have a higher pass rate wouldn't it be wouldn't you get better satisfaction out of passing and think this having failed there once or twice if you did fail there once or twice surely if you, I would say to you look it's it's up to you 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 have the option of of applying to whatever test center you like you don't have to stick with the one that you used before um but I would advise you to um Try a different test centre if you want. You have that right. But I would stick with the test centre that you know best. So the area that you know best, you may have a better chance of passing in on areas where ro on which roads you are more familiar with. Uh, but sorry to hear you failed. If you want to email me your report sheet, I'll have a look at that and I'll get back to you. Dayandtai at gmail.com. Um, so let me know if you have any questions or you want me to clarify that there, Olivia. Billy Dun Billy Dunny ninety one yeah I got mine in Finglas however and uh, from Kildare so hopefully I'll pass best of luck to you Billy Dunny ninety one, uh Sean Lysett just failed my test with only two grade twos because I didn't stop fully when someone passed me while reversing around the corner, 
Seems like a cash cow to me because I can clearly drive. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of conspiracy theories now about testers and and uh, you know failure rates and all this kind of stuff. I don't don't buy into that. I'm not I'm not gonna be uh, I'm not gonna be buying into that, folks, because it's complete it's complete rubbish anyway for a start. So let's just go through Sean's comment again there. Um, hang on, no, I'm just gonna get my comments back. Occasionally the comments just kind of uh, flicker up and down on me. So Sean likes to say, so you failed your test with only two grade twos because I didn't stop fully when someone passed me reversing around the corner. I don't know, Sean. You failed because of two grade twos. You you you, you can't fail on grade twos alone on, unless the two grade twos kind of accumulated and built up. If you're doing a reverse around the corner, Sean, you have to stop if someone is coming behind you. And this is all linked into, you'll see it in my videos, why you need to look behind you when you're reversing around the corner as well as in your mirrors you know like like the head should be kind of swiveling around and around you, you check your mirrors for guidance with the curb and then you'd be checking over your left shoulder um for any cars coming same with the right shoulder and hopefully you'll see someone coming in and you'll be able to stop in plenty of time um if you didn't stop and you got a grade two it's not a fail but it may have accumulated into other uh mistakes you know uh, another tip there, you could also have the windows down a little bit, you know, you might hear the cars coming or you might hear the children playing, that could help you too. So sorry to hear that Sean, uh, it's not a cash cow, uh, it's it's a system that you have to trust and believe in, uh, the testers are very professional, They for 99.9% for .9 of them are spot on, uh, there's no failure rates, you know, no con you know, I'm not getting involved in any conspiracy theories because it's all a lot of nonsense. Any news on Cork Wilton waiting time, please? No is the answer to your question. Cat House on the Ridge. What a great name. Um, I, I, I wouldn't be familiar with what situation is in in other test centres. Uh, you could ring up or maybe email the RSA or maybe maybe talk to local instructors down there. Uh, they might have, they might be in the know more. They might be, they might be chatting or consulting with local testers down there. But I wouldn't be familiar on what the waiting time is in Cork or any other place. So sorry about that. Sean saying he was it was in Finglas, I see. Okay. Uh Tomas H. Hi Dane. Are tests still about forty minutes or have they been shortened? No, I don't think they've been shortened or lengthened. Still about forty minutes. Yeah, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. It can depend on traffic. Some people might get a bit held up on the reverse around the corner if they're doing a reverse around the corner and it's busy school traffic, things like that. Um, so still more or less the, the same time, maybe a little bit longer, I suppose, you know, with the, with the extra checks, like, like the, the sanitizing and the, the face mask checks and, and extra like that. But I don't think they're, uh, overly shorter or overly longer than they were pre pandemic. Darren Robinson passed my test last week. Can I drive on a company now while the license is in the post? Uh, the truth, Darren, no, um, in reality, if you see a guard or if a guard stops you, I'd say he'd be flexible. He or she will be flexible with you. But the answer to your question is you cannot drive unaccompanied until your full license arrives in the post and you have it in your hand. OK, so that's my advice to you. Just be careful on that one. But, but congratulations, Darren Robinson, on passing your test. It's a great achievement. It's a great feeling. I remember mine from the 90s. Um, it's a feeling that always stays with you. So well done. Molder X is essential workers just classed as healthcare? Um, you yeah, know that's that's a good question. I suppose it is. I suppose it is. I think that's who they're targeting. I think that's who they mean when when they say essential workers, like healthcare workers, whether it's nurses, doctors, uh, care caregivers, care assistants. Um, I'm sure they'll be flexible and they might work in. You know, like if you're a if you're a stay at home care um things like that so i think it has a broad meaning i haven't seen or read a definition on the rsa website or anything like that yet um if anybody else t has or wants to let me know please please uh please let me know in the comment section but um i'm sure the rsa will be flexible and if, if it's a genuine genuine situation they will try and get your test um you know expedited quicker um shane morn we go to level five. Our, okay, we're getting repeat comments again here. I don't think Shane is asking that question again. I think it's just coming up uh, on my software here. Uh, if we go to level five, folks, I think the tests will be cancelled. I don't know. Driving testers are considered essential services. So uh, we're all just waiting on the advice from NEFIT and the HSC. So uh, 
there will be tests at level 4. Level 4 driving tests will still be taking place. Girish Nayak, I live in Dublin. Can I book exams in other county? Yes, you don't have to book the test in Dublin, but I would say it's probably better to do the test in your own local area where you know the roads better, where you can easily access uh, opportunities to practice and opportunities to get lessons. So I would assume you'd be better off staying in your local area, but you can apply for other test centers. You're not, you're not, you're not strictly, uh, you know, um, you don't have to do it in the area that you live. Okay. So, but best of luck, Girish, with your test. Cat on the house, cat house on the ridge. Ta thank you, I think, for recommending. Get it. Oh yes, get it. A great book. A while ago, it's really helpful. I'm thinking of writing a book myself as well soon, folks. So I'll let you know on that. Uh, but um, Get It by Brian O'Leary. Is that his name? Brian O'Leary. Do I have it here? Well, just one second. I'm going to just check if I have it on my shelf here. But it's a really, really great book. Um, let me see. Get It by Brian O'Leary. No, I don't think I have it here, actually. Um, no, I have every other book except his one. I'd say I probably gave it to a learner driver or something like that. But anyway, um, Get It by Brian O'Leary, a really, really great book. You'll find it in all good bookshops, probably a few bad bookshops too. Um, it has a, it's kind of a, got a colourful book. It's a really small little tin book, and it's, it's really easy to digest. It has the road signs. It has loads of great tips. Um, a great book. Well, well worth uh, purchasing that, okay? So thanks, Cat House Under Ridge, for that. Explore Ireland. My learner license is going to expire in January. What should I do? Thanks. Well, what should you do? Probably reapply for a new one. Uh, and I'm not being I'm not being sarcastic or funny there. You said that your learner permit is going to expire in January. So to the as things stand, there's no extension if your learner permit um expires in January because it's after the 31st of October. It's only if, if your learner permit expires pre-31st of October, you have a four-month extension. So you're either going to have to get a new one or hopefully maybe pass a test and you won't have to worry about one then, okay? Remember, you can um, apply for a new learner permit three months before it expires. So three months before January, what's that? November, or sorry, October, I think. October, November, yeah. So uh, you can do that. Um, I would be encouraging you to just, you know, the, the waiting list is kind of long enough for the test and for the um, NDLS, so I bear that in mind as well. So to answer your question, if your learner permit is going to expire in January, you have two options, pass the test or get a new learner permit. There's no extension at the moment. Now, there, they, may, they may extend learner permits that expire in January. We'll wait and see, but as it is, there is no extension for learner permits that go out of date. Um, in January. Um, check the NDLS website as I said, great website, everything to do with licenses there and you have a little um, learner permit and driver license expiry calculator so you'll be able to check it out there so ndls.ie. Um, Melvin Rebello, will the examiner be a little lenient with practical due to large backlogs of booking the exam? No, no. Um, Folks, you have to understand, driving testers, their job is to test you, whether it's in good times, bad times, whether we have an economic crash, whether we have an economic boom, COVID or no COVID. They are very professional people. They do the job uh, very well, very dil diligently. There's none of this absolute nonsense about failure rates or um, certain amount quota to have to fail that is just a complete load of rubbish don't don't buy into that absolute nonsense please um the driving testers will test you based on how good or how bad you are and they'll give you an honest assessment of your driving based on how you drove uh, they're not going to be a little lenient they're not going to be extra strict no they they will use their discretion that's the the, the best i can say to you there what's the chap's name again melvin Rebello. listen the best i can say to you is driving testers will use their discretion okay Everybody's different. Every every as people, we're all different. So they will use the discretion to a certain extent. But no, they're not going to be lenient because there's a backlog, and they're not going to be extra strict because there's no backlog. Okay, they're professional people, and they have a they have a an important job to do. So just bear that in mind. But thanks for your comment, um, Lukman I Iodi, uh, Bosari. Congratulations, Darren. Yes, echo that. Ame Sonawane. 
Hi Dane, thanks for sharing your knowledge and experience, my pleasure. Can you help me to know where I can get the information about road signs that could be asked in the final driving exam? Well, I'd be delighted, I may, just uh, download the Rules of the Road PDF, or better still, just buy the book. Do I have a book up there? I should have. Um, so the Rules of the Road book looks like that. Um, it kind of has an orange, can you see that, the light shining out there? kind of has an orange thing. What am I even doing here? Here we go. Uh, Rules of the Road book uh, by the RSA. There's a couple of other books up there as well, but that, that listen, that's the best one. Rules of the Road by the RSA. O'Brien, uh, I think, prints it. You'll see Road Safety Authority on the background. You have the RSA website on the back. Their phone number, their email is all on the back there. So that will have the, the, the road signs, okay? That's the best one that's going to have all your, your old signs there. Rules of the Road book. Any bookshop, you're going to find that. You can download it as well. I have videos on the road signs as well. Just type in Dane Thai uh, road signs and you'll find all everything you need to know about uh, road signs there. Okay, so uh, Rules of the Road. You'll get Bookshop Eason's, um, Hughes and Hughes, if they're still going. The Book Centre, they place in Wexford, Waterford and Kilkenny. Um, so that would be the, the best thing there. And as I said, you can download it as well. Um, so where are we then? Um, Explore Ireland. I have booked the date. Uh, didn't get the test. I am a healthcare worker. Yes, um, I would encourage you, Explore Ireland, to ring the RSA and ask them for a sooner date. Ask them to put you on a priority list. I'm sure they will facilitate you if you're a healthcare worker, okay? So uh, ring them up. Uh, don't keep waiting. You may get lost on the list if you keep waiting. They will uh, hopefully um, push your application up a little bit. Um, okay, so uh, sorry folks, just going to find my, oh here we go, Stephen Murphy, is there a higher pass rate for drivers in automatic over manuals? Stephen Mailflower, <coughs> I don't know, uh, to be honest with you, I've no figures, I've no facts and figures, I would make an educated guess that there probably is a slightly higher pass rate in automatics, but that's not because they're driving automatics, that's just well, I suppose it is because you're driving automatic. There's less work involved in an automatic. Uh, it's less stress because you don't have to worry about clutch or gears. But but to answer your question, Stephen, it's a, it's an interesting question. I don't know. Um, I would assume there's a little bit of a higher pass rate in automatics because of the less workload. But I, I don't know. I don't I don't know of any figures. Uh, someone donated there some twenty euro. Thank you very very much. Whoever that, I'll get down to you in a second. But. Folks, really appreciate the contributions by PayPal and the contributions by chat. Thank you so much for your support. Um, just going to find uh, my comments again because they have a habit of going missing on me. Um, so, where are we now? Sorry, folks, just give me a sec here. Just locating the comments. Um, Explore Ireland, wasn't it? No, no. Uh, Melvin um, Rebello, I do have Indian full license in Ireland and also I have learner permit, learner permits, okay, I'm not really sure what that means, but will it be possible for me to drive unaccompanied? Uh, Melvin, if you have a full Indian license, to the best of my knowledge, you can drive unaccompanied for one year, just one year, okay? After that, you have to go through the process of uh, regularizing your situation by getting the EDT. Now, off the top of my head, I can't, I'm can't. i not quite sure whether you need to get 12 lessons or you might get 6. I'm not sure. You'll have to ring up the NDLS or the RSA to find out because some countries we have, have a, a kind of an agreement where they don't have to do the full 12 lessons. They only have to do 6. I think Pakistan might be one of them. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that. I'll have to check that out. Um, but you can, if you have a full license, you can drive on a company for a year, to the, to the best of my knowledge, but you will have to regularize it after that, okay? Um, so I would just find out more about that by contacting the RSA or the NDLS, okay? Explore Ireland, I'm a healthcare worker uh, with learner's license, learner primary, I think you mean. Uh, shall I drive with a valid international license and insurance and tax well again if you have an international license like an international driving license you can drive for one year um but after that you're going to have to make your situation more regular by going through the whole process of uh doing your essential driver training 
uh, learner permit and eventually full license okay um it, it depends where you're from i mean so you might be able to swap license you might be able to swap licenses as well if if they're if they're mutually recognized um if they have a recognition agreement with with ireland um so uh let's see then folks what else have we got here um and anirua apala as someone with the same condition as you um I can respond. You can rent a car from sixthrentalcars.com. I rented a Renault Clio for 28 days for 550 euro. Okay, that's a question on rental cars there, which I wouldn't be 100% sure on. Uh, Max and O'Flynn, do you call people male flower? No, I would say me owl flower, as in my old flower. You know, me owl flower. It's kind of a saying I use um, there, Maxton. Um, Explore Ireland, would you please share the RSA contact number once again? Yes, indeed, I would. I have it on the, the back of the um, Rule of the Road book here. So the two numbers on the back of this for the RSA number are local 1890 50 60 80. 1890 50 60 80. Um, that's the phone number there. Uh, there's another number, that's a fax number, don't worry about that. Uh, so once again, the low call number for the RSA to ring them up is one eight nine zero five zero six zero eight zero. Okay. Um. So an Anirua Apala. Hi, Dane. Had my test this morning in Dunalira. Uh, this morning. Thanks for everything you do. I believe you're. Vi vi I I hope you. I presume you passed. Um. Let me see. In Dunalira. This morning, thanks for everything you do. I believe your videos played a very important part in shaping my driving. Well, I hope so. Um, and congratulations if you pass in doing Lear this morning. Well done. And thanks for the comment. Um, Melvin Ribello, I failed the practical exam um, twice. I failed the practical exam uh, with 19 grade twos. 19? Jesus. I feel I am losing confidence. Can you share? your email in comments yes and hang on i'm just gonna i got a message here from someone uh yeah just uh, from a contact here just confirming the rsa number 1890 40 60 40. so folks i apologize if did i give out a wrong i'm only giving out the i i'm giving out the number on the back of this book now so i have a the apologies for the confusion the rsa correct number is 1890 40 60 40 okay um the back of the book is obviously uh, wrong or it might be an old number uh, so if you want to contact the RSA one eight ninety forty sixty forty. so thank you to, to the person for clarifying that really appreciate it um, back to the comment on Melvin who said he failed the practical test with 19 grade twos I feel I'm losing confidence can you share your email in the comments yes it's uh, daintai at gmail.com let me just I'll have to type. I'll have to sign in no, sorry folks I'll have to I'm a bit. I'm kind of signed out of chat at the moment. Um, but the my email. You can if you comment on any of my um, any of my videos. I'll I'll send you back at, uh, information with my email. But my email is uh, daintai at gmail dot com. That's d a n e t y g h e at gmail dot com. Um, so. Uh, let me see and I'll, I can go through your report sheet there and give you some advice and maybe point you in the direction of some videos that might help you but if you've got 19 grade twos yeah you might need a little bit of work you might need to get a few lessons you might need to you know might need to kind of maybe look at yourself there um knock knock this 3212 your videos will be of great help when i'm starting my lessons just passed my theory test yesterday well very best of luck to you I have some videos as well for beginners, you know, like how to move off smoothly. I have a great video on how to not stall a car, so just type in how to not stall. And I have lots on changing gear. I suppose the majority of my videos are more towards kind of intermediate or people preparing for their test. But thank you, Noctis, appreciate the comment, and good luck to you on your uh, driving journey. No name, is a test 40 minutes in total, um, including questions and outside checks? Or is it those checks and then the actual drive for 40 minutes? Well, you know, who knows really? Who really knows the answer to that question? It's, it's 
more or less, I'd say it's about 45 minutes altogether. If you give them an extra five minutes for the checks, you see, you see, it, it does depend. It's, it's not like it's, it's not strictly a certain time. Like, I mean, sometimes the checks might take a little bit longer. You know, th there might be extra sanitizing going on at the start. Uh, you know, the reverse might take a bit longer if it's a busy time. But typically, like, if I have a person going out for a test at, say, a quarter past nine for, for the driving test, I can be reasonably sure that they'll be coming back at a about 10 to 10, um, 10 to 10, maybe 5 to 10, you know, and then the testers will often have a chat to them after the test, so whether they pass or fail, they'll bring them into the test centre, they'll ask them to sit down, they'll give them the result, and then they'll give them a little bit of feedback as well, which is really good, because that feedback is so important, it helps them to learn from their mistakes, and to be better next time, so yeah, 40 minutes, 40, maybe 50, it's flexible, it depends like, but, but generally it won't be less than... It won't be less than 30 and it wouldn't usually go more than an hour anyway so 40 is about right and <clears throat> and and Irua apala rep, rep, um, driving in ireland was very different from driving in in issue i s s u i'm not yet yeah, wherever you're me anyway driving in ireland is, is definitely very different that's that's for sure um in the issue means yeah you need to practice a lot watch a lot of it yes good advice there and 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 Irua, thank you for that Shane Morn, I had a lesson the other day, and when I was leaving the center, a girl was leaving doing her test, and 20 minutes into my lesson, um, I was coming back past the center, and she was finished. Seemed quick. That is very quick. Um, are you sure she wasn't doing a lesson? Well, you said she was doing a test, I suppose, so you're, I presume you're reasonably sure she was doing a test. Uh, 20 minutes is quick. I, I won't lie, folks. I, I have seen tests like become you know the occasionally you, you, they might be done in less than half an hour like that but that will be unusual now especially these days uh, i wouldn't say it's inconceivable but it will be very unusual that the person would have their test done in less than 20 minutes but you know it does depend on the route it does depend on on the tester uh patty schmitzlashleck name i think familiar from a couple of live streams thanks for tuning in patty Pass my test oh great great stuff patty you probably won't be tuning in again now that you've passed your test. Thank you for all your help, Prussia Barzo. Um, one of the things I got a grade two on was block changing gears. Uh, block changing gears. He said the tester. I presume she means the tester said it's unnecessary on a straight road. Yeah, I, I can understand what the tester is saying there. To be honest with you, Paddy. I mean, I don't think it's a big deal to be honest with you. But look, as I said. I could give you advice, one one tester could give you advice, another tester could give you a different bit of advice. It, we, we all kind of have our ways and, and we all use our discretion in our own way. Like, we're, we're not all robots, we're not all going to say the exact same thing. But I do agree with the tester, I, I can understand what the tester's saying there. You don't really need to be block changing on a straight road. Um, If I'm teaching somebody how to drive from the beginning, I, I certainly wouldn't do that. I would always get them to go down one by one. Because... I think it helps slow the car down more gradually because you're using the brake and an extra gear change like they're like you're going to third instead of going from four to second so you're you're kind of gradually slowing the car down which can help you see better plan ahead better all that kind of stuff plus for a beginner it kind of helps them get used to the gears more helps them get used to the clutch helps them get used to just to the general drive let's say um so i would use block changing more on maybe busier roads or if you're a bit stuck for time but yeah it's interesting the tester says that and if folks if you've done a test and you've failed or you've passed let, let us know here in the comment section what the tester said what did the tester say in your area i'm sure it'll be interesting for other people tuning in to hear what tester said in other parts of the country so that's a great comment paddy thank you very much and congratulations on your on passing your test great job well done uh luke mon uh, confirming the uh, number here, eighteen nineteen. No, look, man. Let me just consult my text message because I have a very reliable uh, friend here who's texted me the number. Uh, eighteen ninety forty sixty forty. So one eight nine zero four zero six zero four zero. Okay, it's not eighteen nineteen. It's eighteen ninety. Okay. Um. Lukeman said he rang it and it's uh, not available. Okay. Um, it maybe it's because of maybe that's because of uh, it's on a Saturday. I it's 
it's um but the number I have here is eighteen ninety forty sixty forty. Um you've probably dialed the wrong one anyway, you've probably dialed eighteen nineteen there, okay? So let me know how you get on there. I'll be I what time are we now? We're nearly twenty to four, so I'll be here for another forty minutes anyway. Um keep me updated there, Luke man. Um we'll see. But what time is for I yeah, maybe they are open on a Saturday. I'm not sure if they're if they're still open this late on a Saturday. Um no name says I think it's eighteen ninety uh, 40, 60, 40. You can Google it to double check. Yes, good advice there. No name and thanks for that comment. Um, let me see where are we gone. I'm just getting my comments up here again. Um, okay, folks. Sorry, folks. Occasionally here, um, to, I just kind of lose my comments and I have to just find where my last comment was because I'm trying to get all the comments. I don't. Want, I don't want to skip anyone's comment if you know what I mean. Uh, so I think I have it back here now. Mulder is next, I think. Uh, Mulder X. Um, yeah, I think, I, I, again, I've got another very reliable uh, friend here who said it's Monday to Friday, that number, okay? So Monday to Friday. So it's very possible that uh, they're not open on a Saturday or nobody's answering the phones on Saturday. So thank you very much to that person who's confirming that. Really, really appreciate that. Um, let me see... Uh, Mulder greatly appreciated the time. Anytime, Mulder, just just comment. Let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for tuning in, Emmett Byrne. Uh, hi, Dan. Should you tilt your inside mirror for the reverse around the corner? And also, should you indicate before moving off for the turnabout? So, uh, tilt your inside mirror for the reverse around the corner. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Now, you mean I? Uh, you mean the inside, like the center mirror, the middle mirror? Um, I mean, what, what benefit would that do? How how would that help you? Like your your inside mirror should generally stay the same. Maybe you mean the left. Yeah, maybe you mean the left side mirror. Do you? I I'm going to assume you mean the left side mirror because it would make more sense if you ask me. Should you adjust your left side mirror? And the answer is you can adjust the left side mirror if you want. You can request the tester to do it so you don't have to lean over the tester because, you know, you don't want to lean over the tester anyway but especially in the the in these times of COVID-19 and the tester will oblige if he needs to um, although sometimes you may have an electronic control on your side of the car so you can adjust your left mirror all right but I don't generally advise that because I think it kind of creates blind spots and you might not see people behind you as much if you have the mirror down too low but there's nothing really wrong with it I suppose um should you indicate before moving off for the turnabout? Yes, you should indicate moving off on the turnabout just for the first part, though. You, you know, you know the, the first leg when you're going out to the right, you should definitely indicate there. But you don't have to indicate for the rest of the turnabout, though. It's not necessary. Um, Lukeman, thanks. It works. Oh, great. So that that works then. For the I think he means the phone number works. Brilliant. Uh, no name. Great. Just just kind of getting that uh, update if you get good news. Yeah. Lead build. If a pedestrian is crossing from left to right. Do I have to wait until he or she reaches the other side, or can I go after he passes my lane? Uh, just to be safe, you should probably just wait until he go, go until he crosses the full way. But sometimes the pedestrian crossings are divided, so you'll have like a little island. In, sorry, let me say it again. You'll have a little island in the middle of the crossing, and then if if they've if they're on the island in the middle and the other side, well, then that's considered like a separate crossing. So you're you're okay then. But I would always just be cautious there. To, to, you should just try your best to let them cross the full way it'll be it'll be better but it does depend on the if the island island is in the middle of the of the pedestrian crossing because the existence of an island means there's there's two crossings then if you know what i mean they're they're, they're separated um stephen murphy waitley reached the other side yeah good advice steve uh just to be safe exactly stephen yeah let build here in russia russia of all places they go after you they go after you pass their lane um oh it's probably the pedestrian crossing i think yeah uh our lanes are quite wide okay shane mullen you can go when he passes this is creating quite a lot of uh opinions there all right yeah uh stephen murphy if if it was a test i would wait until he is off the road but if not i go yeah you just have to use your own judgment there steve meal flower um super chat there folks and anirua apala thank you so much for that and you made it very kind donation there of 20 euro really appreciate that and <clears throat> thanks so much i i know you've commented before there uh, the name rings a bell all right uh so and any any rua i think i'm if i'm saying that correctly thanks for everything you're doing dan helped me a lot to improve my driving 
Also, finding my way around PayPal was hard. Yeah. I think everything is hard the first time you do it, you know. Um, and then once you get used to it, it's, 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 it's kind of easy afterwards. So glad YouTube Super Chat exists. Yeah, so am I. Uh, please do consider other ways we can support what you're doing. Indeed, yeah. I was thinking of Patreon as well, but that kind of involves subscriptions. And I think people are, with me, I think people are kind of, follow me on youtube or whatever for a short time and then they kind of move on so i think paypal kind of suits better because you can make this one-off donation uh without you know without getting tied into subscriptions but i i'm i'll consider other things i'm maybe merchandise maybe other ways of of contributing maybe in the future yeah but any any rule at pallet thank you so much for that donation I, i'm really appreciated next shane mullen uh another donation from luke come on down there i'll get down to that in a second uh, Shane Mullen, um, personal preference, you won't get marked if you go when he passed your lane. Okay, that's just on the pedestrian crossing there then. Um, okay, so let me see, folks. Where are we? Juliet Amamore. I like your calmness when talking. Oh, thank you very much. I've learned to be, try and be calm because I've learned over the last few years few, some things happened to me and I just kind of came to the conclusion that... Um, there's not much point in worrying about things that you can't control. And I try anyway. I try. It doesn't always work. But I try and live my life on that basis that uh, all you can do, all you can worry about and focus on is things that you can c c control. Because there's no point in worrying about things you can't control because it's just simply wasted energy. So I try and be calm. Um, I'm the same in the lens. I don't really do lessons anymore. I do lessons with a select few here in Wexford, but that's it. And I would like to think I'm just as calm, if not calmer, in the lessons. But thank you, Juliet. Appreciate that comment. Shane Mullen, unless the person decides to turn back and run. Yeah, this this whole pedestrian crossing thing is creating quite a lot of uh, debate there, folks. Yeah, um, turn back and run the opposite direction. We may have a problem. That's true. All right. Yeah, it was just that was about the pedestrian crossing. I always say it's better to wait until he's full way across or almost full way across. But it can depend if there's an island in the middle of the pedestrian crossing. Well, then there are two separate crossings. And it should be fine then. Lukeman, very generous. Thank you very much for that donation, Lukeman. Five euro. Really appreciate it. And if you have any more questions or comments, just let me know. But thank you. Any Rua Apala. I did pass. Great. Brilliant. That's great news. Any Rua. And congratulations to you. Robbie Croish. I am a learner driver. Haven't tried driving in quite a while. Is it worth refreshing my memory on Thierry? before taking lessons um yeah i mean it's, it's better to do that you know like you're, you're a learner driver you're probably a bit rusty you haven't been driving in a while it would definitely be a good idea to uh kind of put a bit of preparation in before you take your lessons for example if i'm giving lessons to somebody um I always try and advise, and sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't listen to this advice, but I always say to them, if you have a lesson coming up with me at 11 o'clock, okay, I would always give people links to videos to watch to help them prepare for the next lesson. So I, And I'd always give them written notes. So at the end of every lesson, the learner driver that I'm dealing with will, be write, will have written out notes, usually five, six, seven, eight bullet points, and they'd have video links to kind of try and improve on their skills. So I would say to them, Look over your logbook, um, read your notes like over and over again, um, watch the videos again that I sent you, and that way then you see when you come into the lesson, you're going to be so much more prepared because you're going to be tuned in to what's happening and to what's going on. And therefore you're, you, you're in a better place, your head's in a better zone, and you're going to have a better lesson, okay? It's the whole reason why people get a lesson before the driving test usually, so they're, they're zoned in and they're prepared. So yeah, that's kind of a rhetorical question there. I'd say, Robbie, if you, uh, Robbie, is it? Yeah, if if you're going back to driving, it's a great idea to refresh your memory on theory. Do a few practice theory tests. You know, watch some of my videos, whatever. Read read the rules of the road book. You know, Robert Herman passed my test last week. Let's get back to Robert there now. Robert uh, Hearn, pa great stuff. Robert Hearn, congratulations. Uh, delighted for that. Watched all the videos. Brilliant. That's great. Delighted to hear that. Daniel won. Ah, oh, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel missed out on one the, on the first live session. And I was going to give him a shout out. Uh, so, good to have you, Daniel. I remember I remember you were disappointed that you missed me. Uh, but, you know, that's life sometimes. Full of ups and downs. So you made it. 
good to have you Daniel let me know if you have any questions big shout out as well to the driving instructors that I know about um, I don't really know that many driving instructors I remember the first one I ever came in contact with was a guy called Nigel Kelly here in Wexford uh, he's down in Rosslare and he's one of the funniest people I have ever met in my life you 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 wouldn't think he was a driving instructor he should be on stage I'll always remember him. Um, some great local instructors as well who I pass a bit of business on to as well. Lisa Whitehead, Julian uh, Dunlop, John Morgan, a great guy as well. Um, up in Dublin then, In Gear Driving School. If you're getting lessons up in Dublin, check out In Gear, Paul Murphy, In Gear. Great, great guy, Paul. I did a training course with Paul back in 2008 with the ISM. Um, who else have we got up there? Ian Daly. Great reputation, Ian has a uh, safety first driving school. Um, what that chap doesn't know about automatic driving is not worth writing on a piece of paper. Um, who else we got? Um, Carl Watsiel, sure. How, where, would I, where would we be without Carl? I'd say Carl Watsiel is one of the most enthusiastic driving instructors I've ever come across. I've never actually met him. Much. We, I interacted with him on Facebook and uh, he's in Kildare, so Kildare Driving Academy. If you're in Nace, uh, check out Carl. Uh, there and another instructor I I started up a chat with last night. What's his name? I want to give him a mention. Um, Keating is the second name anyway. Paul Keating. So Paul, I've been sending Paul a few messages. Paul likes the videos. So Paul Keating, keep up the good work. And sorry if I missed any, left on anybody out there, folks. But let's get back to the comments anyway. Um. Oh yeah, Black and Amber Driving School. Sorry, I'm in Kilkenny. Rob McHugh. Anyone in Kilkenny? Give Rob a shout. He again, I've never met him. I just kind of interact on Facebook with him. But he's a good guy. Uh, he sounds like a good guy anyway. Uh. So how are you? Hope you're doing there. Hope you're doing well there, Rob. Okay. So Blanch um Bal, ba Balakan. Let me see. Balakandran Mor Morakasan. Uh. So again, dear all, the RSA number it, numbers are. One eight ninety forty sixty forty or oh nine six two five zero 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 exactly. Thank you for that. Uh, Audrey Dwyer, hi. Pass my test on automatic. Do I need to do the test again if I want to drive a manual? The answer to your question, Audrey, is a resounding yes. If you want a manual driving license, you have to pass in a manual car. You've passed in an automatic, and that's great. Congratulations, but it's only valid for automatic cars. You're you you can't you you're still considered to have like a learner permit for a manual. So if you pass an automatic, your full license is automatic. If you want to drive a manual, you have to do a manual test. Um, Kevin Spain, do you have any tips to stop drifting when I drive a small car and struggle to stay in the center of the lane? Um, yeah. Get your car checked by a mechanic to make sure your steering balance is okay, first of all. And I would advise people as well to just kind of keep an eye on the left side mirror as well. And there's a technique you can do when, when you're looking ahead. Sorry, the left side mirror is what I mean. Like, So so I do often say you can use the left side mirror and try have your door handle kind of like overlapping the yellow line, like the hard shoulder, for example, and, and try and keep that consistent on a, on a straight road anyway. So that can help you kind of judge your position on the left. Um, there is the other ways as well. Experience usually takes care of it. But if, you're, if your car is drifting to the left, you're going to have to just concentrate, maybe make little adjustments on it. Or you might have to maybe see if you're, see if it's, an, if, if it's part of a bigger problem because some roads are kind of like slanted a little bit. You know, the, the, there will be a little bit of a, Little bit the hill on it, like they might be higher in the middle and and kind of lower at the sides. So I would just be maybe thinking about just making sure that everything is okay mechanically with the car. But really, I mean, experience is going to take care of that. Um, S Zombie asks, can I make a video on automatic cars, please? Yes, I would hope to do that in the future sometime. I think that'd be a good idea. Just need to get my hands on an automatic. Um, but good idea. Thanks for the suggestion, Michael DC. Hi again, then on the test if I'm stopped at a stop sign at a T-junction and a car on the major road stops and flashes me to go what should I do well that is a good question that is a good question I'm gonna start by saying it depends on the situation it depends on the flow of traffic but you're stopped at a stop sign okay so you're on the minor road you're on the road where you don't have priority you have to wait until it's safe to pull out so another car on the major road stops and flashes 
Now, the honest answer is you can go, you can go, but you have to make sure that you carry out the required observation as if the other car had never flashed you, okay? You have to make sure as well that the other car has not suddenly decided to change his mind and speeds up because if he does, you're in a bad place, then you're going to be considered out in the main road when he has right away and he maybe lost patience, whatever like that. So the answer is, you could go, but just make sure you're looking left and right, left and right, to make sure that there's nobody else coming, that there's nobody, for example, overtaking the car who's being a good Samaritan, okay? You don't want to, like, pull out and there's somebody overtaking the guy who's trying to let you go. And so I would just be careful there on that one. Um, It could be done, but just, just be cautious. Uh, just because he flashes you, do not consider that everything is grand and everything is rosy and, and you can go... Just because he flashes you, the road could just could be just as busy as if he wasn't flashing you, okay? So I would be very, very careful on that one. Uh, don't get caught out there. Okay, let's see. Where's my comments gone now again? Um, that was Michael DC, wasn't it? Yeah, Max and Offline. Uh, merch, like one of those smelly things for the inside of the car. Yeah, or maybe T-shirts, maybe hoodies, something like that. Um, yeah t-shirt with me old flower on it or uh, another driving lesson video something like that yeah exactly i haven't really thought much about it to be honest with you i just i'm kind of enjoying the way things are at the moment um so but i, I am kind of occasionally looking into it um things come into my head all right but um for now the whole paypal thing is uh seems to work out well and i get a few bob from google ads as well so when people watch my ads you know i watch the ads on my videos i mean Cat house on the ridge, can the tester ask you to do reverse bay or reverse parallel parking? Not parallel parking, no. He may, uh, he or she may ask you to reverse bay park if it's at the end in the test center. You know, like like in Wexford, for example, we have a test center which is in a nice location. It's kind of up in a cul-de-sac, but there's five or six bays in it. So it is possible that you may be asked to reverse into a bay in that situation, but that's only as a result of maybe a lack of spaces in the you know in a lack of available spaces i mean but strictly speaking there is no parallel parking and there is no bay parking um it's just that you might be asked at the end to bay park uh depending on the test center but in my experience most testers in wexford for example they'll just at the end of the test they'll just ask you to go forward into the space so you just have to drive straight into the space I think it'd be great if there was parallel parking or if there was bay parking. I think it would add to uh, it would add to driver skills. So I, I I hope to see that coming in in the future. Uh, I'm not sure if it will come in anytime soon though. Daniel one in fairness, I'd like a Dane bobblehead. Yeah, so would I actually. But one that has a voice too. Well done, you checked your blind spot. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, Daniel. I I I'll look into that. I uh, I'm not sure if many people would be uh, buying that, but yeah, uh, it's a good idea. All right. And who knows where, where that might go. Uh, Maxton, Maxton Uff, Ufflin, uh, Bobblehead Dane, great stuff, Meow Flower. Yeah, could have something like that on it. Daniel won, up the cats. Yeah, the cats. You must be a Kilkenny man then, are you? Um, yeah, God, Kilkenny gave, has given Wexford some terrible heartache over the over the years. Uh, many memories of going to Croke Park and getting a uh, good beating by the cats. But uh, yeah, looks like the tables are turning at the moment. Um, bobblehead Dane, jizz or some sham indicate after the exit you spud. Yeah, something like that. You know, we, we you, who knows? We'll have to see how it goes. Um, so what have we got here? Uh, S Zombie, because I have given the test in an automatic car. Uh, because I have given the test in an automatic car. Uh, but I failed two times. Well, sorry to hear that, S Zombie. If you've, if you've, uh. If you failed an automatic car, is that, are you saying you're you're you want to do it in an automatic car because you failed two times in a manual car? Is that is that I think that's the, that's what I'm think you're saying anyway. That is an option, you know. I mean, I I was giving lessons to a girl there a while ago, and and she was used to driving an automatic car. And she drove not she drove an automatic car in her own time, but but then she go to my car and drive a manual and she, she found it a bit tricky to get used to it and, and she was kind of struggling a bit with the gears and, and she was coming quick off the clutch because she wasn't used to a clutch and eventually I just advised her maybe you should just stick with the automatic car because 
you seem to have an automatic car that you're going to drive for the foreseeable future. Plus, I think automatic cars are the, the way of the future. So eventually she ended up just doing it in the, in the automatic car and she passed and she was delighted. Um, you see, it's a personal decision. It's, it's up to you. I mean, you have to think about that yourself. If if you're if you're going to pass in an automatic car, though, you know you're only you, you, your full license is only for automatic driving. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Kyle M C, hi Dane. You're you've probably been asked this a lot already. Oh, don't worry about that. I, I get asked a lot of things at the same time. I, I I don't have any problem answering the same question. But what do you think lessons? But do you think lessons <coughs> and tests will be cancelled if we go to level four or level five? Uh, Kyle MC, it's a good question, Kyle. It's it's a valid question. If if a question like that is asked a lot, it obviously means it's on people's mind. Um, <clears throat> so the answer is tests are going ahead now as normal in level three. Tests will go ahead as normal if we go to level four. Now regarding level five, I don't know. I don't think uh tests will go ahead or lessons will go ahead at level five because that's like literally lockdown. Now. Even at level five, they may still do tests for like certain categories of people, like essential workers, healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, that kind of stuff. I think I'm not a hundred percent sure now. So, to answer your question, tests and driving lessons will be going ahead as normal at level four. Level five, I doubt it, or maybe on a very on a, on a much more restricted basis. So, thanks for that question, Kyle. Emer Winters, for the theory questions. In the driving test, are the questions based off the rules of the road book or the theory test book or both? Uh, both, to be honest, Emer, it, it's, they, you know, a valid question is a valid question, whether it comes from the theory test or the uh, rules of the road book. It's, nobody has exclusive rights on, on questions to ask. So the tester will ask you whatever questions he feels are valid or she feels are valid. Tip, excuse me. Typically, the questions are going to be to do with, like, road markings. For example, like, you know, zigzag lines on the road. You know, don't don't park or don't overtake on the zigzag lines. Uh, the yellow box, like, you know, you're not allowed to stop on the yellow box unless you're turning right. The rules around the clearway, no parking in the clearway. The amber light, don't like stop unless you're too close to stop safely. At traffic lights, um, the flashing amber light, pedestrian crossing, you know, flashing amber light. Um, right of way maybe and non-marked crossroads um, you know when can you overtake on the left you see there's so many different questions that the tester could ask you um, it's best to be prepared uh, as prepared as possible uh, I have loads of videos on theory anyway so have, have a look at those um, let's see how we're doing on time folks 4 o'clock now folks so I will be finishing up soon ish maybe 20 minutes half an hour and see how the comments go um, if the comments are <clears throat> drying up I'll, I'll i'll finish sooner but at the moment half four is my limit um so sorry just gonna look, get, get back to my comments here now um where was i emer winters was it um yeah and then max and offlin uh dane bobblehead patreon site of safe driving yeah you never know stranger things have happened um i must look into that merch i haven't really looked into it very much um i have another youtube channel as well which i which i kind of have as well on learning irish so if you're interested in learning irish just type in learn irish into youtube and uh you'll have gulior fishon ella fui myanga loads of uh, uh videos on our native language um I'm a cat, all right, lad. Oh, he is from Kenny, unfortunately. Uh, Wexford are beating us now. Yeah, not sure. That usually doesn't last very long, though. It happened a little bit in the 70s. We had one or two wins in the 80s. The 90s, for the most part, is Kilkenny have the upper hand on us. Uh, part of the reason for that is because you don't really play much else in Kilkenny apart from Harlan. So, but it's good to have, you know, this is what makes us who we are. Um, so thanks for that, Daniel. Uh, that's brilliant. Uh, he'd be a good PayPal. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I get some good support by by PayPal, and I really, really appreciate the support, folks. Um, <coughs> whether people donate is completely up to them. People donate from a couple of euro right up to fifty, a hundred euro. I mean, I if I'm doing, I as I said, I do lessons on a. I only give lessons to a a a, a select few at the moment. Uh, I charge thirty five euro per lesson. I know that's probably um 
a little bit cheaper than it would be in Dublin. It could be 40, 45 in Dublin or even more. Uh, but whatever you donate uh, is is completely up to you and I really appreciate the support. Um, thanks, Dane, for the wonderful job. Uh, I will contact the RSA on Monday and work hard to pass. That's Luke Mon Iodi. Exactly, Luke. That's that's good good advice. I will keep you posted. Do let me know if, if I'm live next Saturday. I hope to be live next Saturday again. Same time, folks. Um, or in any any comment on any YouTube video, I, I will see it. But uh, so that's that's a, a good plan there, Luke Mon, and the very, very best look to you. Try contact them first thing Monday morning, you know, you hopefully you might get through quicker on a Monday morning than you would on a than you would at lunchtime, say. Robin Byrne, I tend to mumble myself I tend to mumble to myself about mirrors and gears when doing maneuvers. Can I do that in the test? Yeah, I don't that there's no problem with that. I, I sometimes in, in the lessons for example, I would say to people um <clears throat> if a driver is if we're at a certain stage and we have time i would a ask the driver to uh talk themselves through the junction like say what they're doing as they're doing it so like mirrors and indicate and all that so it's good it can help calm you down it can help keep you focused and i i don't think the tester will have any problem at all with that in fact i know they won't um they'll be fine i remember talking to one tester about that if it makes you feel better and it helps you do the junction better then do it no problem at all Sar Saria <coughs> Charez, I've passed uh first two stages of the ADI exam, so that's approved driving instructor. So that's great, Saria. Best of luck to you. Now waiting, <coughs> now waiting for the final test, which is instruction ability test. Any advice, please? Yeah, well that's that's interesting. And so Sh Sa Saria here looks like she's going to do uh going to be a driving instructor and it's it's a great job and i and i wish you the very uh very best luck with it so with the instructional ability test it's all about uh communication you see how you communicate with the learner and you know there's there's i mean there's there's so much to it like um and i would recommend uh there's, there's a great website uh youtube uh channel i think it's it's uh um english based one um what's it called lb is it uh oh god what's the name of that um they do driving lessons over there not lbc i think that there's a radio station called lbc um uh, but anyway i i if i think of it i'll 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 let you know it's all about communication you see so it's it's explaining to the learner what you want them to do and it's always good as well with the uh, with the learner to like once you've explained something to them, give them the chance to do it. Don't talk too much. Like you have to let them do it for themselves. And self analysis is a big part. So after a little bit of a stretch of driving, um, ask the learner like what did you think of that or what 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 do you, what are your thoughts on that driving? You know, encouraging them to self analyze is very important and not talking too much as well you know not not doing too much like like don't like if you have to explain something in a folder or something just explain it quickly and and quick reasonably briefly don't get bogged down in instruction because the most important thing the last time i had one of those <coughs> the examiner the examiner saying to me don't over don't over instruct don't over talk just say what you need to say and get driving because the best thing for a learner driver is that they're actually driving in the lesson and practicing Okay, so the best of luck to you, Saria. If I can be of any help, let me know. Daniel, one, when we're on the subject of flashing lights, um, it's back, Daniel, one, sorry, I've lost that comment again there. Here we are. When we're on the subject of flashing lights, can people please stop doing that? It's extremely dangerous. Just today, I seen a near accident. One person flashed, uh, the other didn't stop. Yeah, it's a tricky one there, Daniel Mailflower. You see, um, I would prefer if people, like, it see it, it depends on the on the situation. It's sometimes it's nice when people are flashing you because they they might be trying to let you out of a junction or something like that. You know, they might be saying to you there might be a long line of traffic and, and they're flashing to, in order to give you an opportunity to go. But it's probably better if, if you see a learner driver and you see if you're a normal regular driver and you see a learner driver, you might not realise that they're actually they're not getting lessons, they're actually in their driving test. So if you flash them or if you encourage them out you're kind of putting them on the spot, you know. They're here on one of the biggest days of their lives. They've, they've a tester beside them, and they're now being 
um, put under pressure where they have to kind of make a decision. So you're better off not flashing people. Just let them make their own decision about pulling out. Having said that, it is nice if someone kind of lets you out and it's slow moving traffic and there's no real danger. Um, it does depend. But seeing people flash people when there's guards up ahead is just completely ridiculous. It's almost like you're encouraging reckless driving. So it depends what you mean there, Dan. I, 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 I hear what you're saying, though. Uh, can depend on the, depend on the context. Cahill Fitzpatrick, can I book my test before I have all my lessons done? Yeah, you can. I have six lessons, but it looks like... It looks like I'll be waiting ages for a test. So could I book now and get lessons done? It's not going to make any difference there, Carl Mealflower. Like, if you have six lessons done, you can still apply for your test. The RSA will process your application to a certain extent. They'll take your money. Um, but you're not going to get a test date any sooner. Like, you know, you're going to have to do all 12 lessons before they actually give you a test date. So before you have the 12 lessons done, you're kind of locked, if you know what I mean. So... Um, my advice to you is to try and get the 12 lessons done in a reasonable time frame. I wouldn't go rushing the 12 lessons now either. Yet. Like, it's nice to do the lessons in such a way that you have time to practice, okay? So when you get your 12 lessons done, then you'll be ready for the test, hopefully. Uh, but remember, you have to wait six months. Your permit has to be six months old as well. I don't think that's going to be any problem these days anyway. Uh, so you see, you have six lessons done, but you'll be waiting ages for it. Yeah, you could be waiting ages. You know... I wouldn't be getting overly excited about that either, folks. You know, like like before all this started, the, the waiting list was down to like, um, I think it was down to five or six weeks in a lot of places. It was really, really low. Like, uh, we're already doing tests now since July, okay? So what's that like? We're already doing tests over three months. So I think it is kind of gradually getting back to the way it was before uh, March. Uh, so I wouldn't be getting too excited about the waiting list. It does depend on the test center, of course. I know there's someone's with long waiting list and some are, some are kind of getting a bit more under control. But for you, Carl, I would just concentrate on getting the 12 lessons done first. But listen, if you want to apply, apply. At least you're in the system then. At least they have your application. Uh, but you have to do the 12 lessons before you're going to get a date. Just don't forget that. Daniel Wan again. It appears that when the person waiting to emerge sees the flash, they go to move but forget to check if the approaching car is going to stop. Yes, Comment of the day there, folks, from Daniel Wan, even though he's a Kilkenny man. That's very, very important. That's the point I was making before. Like, just because someone flashes you, the worry is that if you... This this is the whole reason why you should not beckon anybody out on the road. So let's say you're a driver and you see a pedestrian on the edge of the path and you do this then. You kind of say, yeah, off you go, go on. The pedestrian then might rush across the road and not take the appropriate observations can happen as well to a driver if you do the same to a driver so that's the danger so you have to be very aware that if you are uh, the recipient of that good gesture and um, make sure that if you're a pedestrian crossing the road and someone flashes you out well make sure you you, you keep looking to make sure no no other cars coming like because if it's not a pedestrian crossing cars would, would you know generally have the right away unless you start the crossing and the same if you're a car pulling out make sure you even if someone flashes you, make sure you do extra checks just to make sure you're not pulling out in front of anybody else. Because just because somebody flashes you doesn't mean it's completely safe to go. You have to do your observations. You have to do your looks. Um, Samuel Gass, or Das, how many turns can you do for the turnabout on a long car narrow lane? Um, as many as is practical there, Samuel Flower. Um, like ideally, you do it in three. But if you're saying you have a long car, and it's a narrow road, you're not going to do that in three. You may need five or seven turns or whatever. So my advice there, do it as, as, as quick, as practical, as safely as you can. But it's not um, it's not a race, okay? It's not a three-point turn. It's called a turnabout, not a three-point turn. So if you need a few more turns because it's a bigger car on a narrow road, no problem. Just just do it. Just don't forget the observation. I, I the thing, folks, about the turnabout is I often find the longer it goes on, the more likely the person's observation tends to suffer. So I often find with the average person that uh, the observation can be can be great at the start. It can be kind of OK in the middle. And then just at the end, then just at the very, very last, um, the very last turn before you finish the turnabout, they, they, they kind of go into gear uh begin to turn the wheel around and go and there's no looks left and right like they're just kind of just looking straight ahead 
So uh, it's, it's so important to keep the observation going there, especially at the end. Just because you're finished a turnabout doesn't mean you're finished the observation. So uh, what was I saying there? How many turnabouts? Yeah, as many as, it, as many as it takes, as many as it's practical. Now, if having said that, if you can do the turnabout in three turns or if you can do it in five turns, don't go making a meal of it now, you know. Don't don't go don't go making a big deal. Like like if, if you can do it in three, just do it in three. Don't be doing five for the sake of five, okay? Um next Melvin Rebello, how to donate money to your great work. Well, that's that's a very nice of you to ask. Uh you can do so by PayPal. Uh links will be in the description to the channel. So if you go onto my YouTube channel and go to the about page, you'll see it there. Um, it should be in the description to this. It might not be in the description to this video yet. It's not just as live, but later on maybe. But PayPal is probably the handiest and quickest way. And uh, thanks for the comment. If any support, Melvin, really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Cat House on the Ridge. Um, let me just find that comment there now. What time are we at, folks? Um, nearly a quarter past four. Okay, so I will be leaving this in. I will be ending the live stream in about fifteen minutes. Okay. Um, let's see now, folks. A few comments to catch up on here. Let's see where are we. Uh, I'm just trying to find this. As I said, sometimes the comments kind of go a little bit haywire. Um, where am I? Where am I? Just bear with me, folks. A couple minutes. Uh, is there advantage? Uh, one sec now. Uh, okay. Yeah, Melvin was the last comment. Cat House on the Ridge, a warning for all of you. I got a SC, SC mark. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Probably obvious. I'm not quite getting what SC is. But anyway, I got an SC mark for waiting for the green light halfway on the cycling part. Okay, this is not making a whole lot of sense, but... By the way, two instructors advised me that the sensor wouldn't detect me otherwise. Okay. I'm going to have to try and translate that again. So, Cat House on the Ridge is warning us. She got an S... He or she got an SC mark for waiting for the green light halfway on the cycling part. Oh, yeah. Maybe the sensor wouldn't see you otherwise. So, I, I think what you mean is there... I'll just try and uh, summarize that... You don't want, like, if you're stopping at lights, just make sure you stop before the first white line. You don't want to be going into the cycle bay or, or the cycle area where cyclists wait, okay? Because I think she means that the, the possibility is that the sensor on the light might not see you. I think that's what you mean, which is fair enough. Uh, but the general, the, the thing to take from that is you, you don't want to go too far because you're going to, if, if you end up stopping in a cycle bay, it's not good anyway. Um, if you're coming up to traffic lights, always aim. If you're the first car, if you're the first car, of course, always aim to stop. If you have to stop, stop before the first white line, okay? Uh, can please, can, uh, S zombie, can please female, okay, can please female instructors in Dundalk? Not really sure what S zombie is saying there. There's something about female instructors in Dundalk. Um, Amanda Hall is up in Dundalk, isn't she? Is that her name? Um, Amanda Hall, if you're looking for a driving instructor in Dundalk, check out Amanda Hall. Um... I, I don't know her, but I have I know she shares some of my stuff on Facebook, which I really appreciate. So check out Amanda Hall, uh, driving instructor in Dundalk. Melvin Rebello, is there any advantage to using a smaller car than big or medium car during practical exam? Yes, I think so. I think there is, Melvin. Yeah, I'm always happy if I'm giving lessons to somebody and they're using their own car and they have like a Nissan Micra or a Ford Fiesta or an Opel Corsa or something that's nice and small compact because you're doing your test you're doing your driving test like and the driving test for the most part is going to be in town okay it's going to be in town that means you're going to have more turns more speed bumps more mini roundabouts more maybe more tighter streets so you're always better off in a small car uh doing all those things reversing around the corner i think is much easier in a small car because on small cars the windows at the back are usually bigger and you have a better view out the back uh, you, you're less, I think you're less, you know, it's less of a challenge, you know what I mean? It's because you, you feel you're driving something more compact. So generally speaking, I would say to people, use the car that you're more comfortable in. And if that's a smaller car, well then, all the best. Um, all, all the better, sorry. Um, 
that's generally, you know, like some people might be absolutely fine in a, in a more medium sized car, like a Volkswagen Golf or a bigger car. I've given lessons in all kinds of cars, but I would think just as a general rule, without getting too detailed, but in a, as a general rule, I think smaller cars are, are better for city or town driving, definitely, yeah. Um, Daniel one Catos, I would assume the instructors were wrong. I don't think they should ever recommend you to stop on the box for cycles. Well, Daniel one you are speaking an awful lot of sense for a Kilkenny man, I have to say. Uh, so that's a great comment. You, like I, I, I don't know why anyone would say to you to go up into the cycle bay or the cycle box. Uh, that that's the kind of an advanced area before the first car where cyclists are allowed to wait. It's often marked out with a picture of a cyclist painted. Um, so I can't. I don't understand how how you would en even end up there. Like it's 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 a kind of a strange thing to end up there because you've already probably risked failing anyway for stopping the wrong place. But anyway, Leslie, um, would you ever do a video with someone doing a mock test? Yes, good good comment. Or would that be allowed? I don't see why not. I've seen other videos. I wouldn't wouldn't bother me anyway. I've seen a few from other countries, but would be great to watch some mock tests in Ireland. Yeah, well, the ISM have a have a mock test as well. Uh, you can check that out as well. Uh, the ISM Irish School of Motoring YouTube channel. They, they have um, uh, one or two mock tests as well, which are quite good. And they're very old. I think they're going back like six or eight years. Like, but then again, some of my videos are that old as well. But Leslie, that's a, it's a great idea. I I do. Well, I would definitely hope to. I just need to find someone to do it. I need to. Get, it's not the easiest at the moment with the COVID things, but it has been on my mind. I would definitely love to do a mock test because I think it would give people a great idea of the whole test and what it's about in one uh, half hour uh, slot yeah so good definitely hopefully in the future fingers crossed s zombie can you please give your number um whose number are you looking for um i i not sure about that um ame sonawena again hi then would you tell us why don't we give indicators when reversing around the corner well you know it's a it's a you, you can give you can indicate reversing on the corner. I, I, I don't like. There's no real need for it. To be honest with you, I don't see the need for it. But I've lately I've been saying to people just, just, just indicate um on the reversal on the corner. You see, the reason I say there's no need for it because your reversal light is coming on anyway. So that should be enough of an indicator to say that you're going around the corner. But if you want to indicate left, say that you're reversing around the left corner, that's that's no problem at all. Do it. It's absolutely fine. Uh, Daniel Wan, uh, I just stopped in. If you want to let them out, uh, yeah, exactly. So just stop. If you want to let somebody out, just stop. Don't flash the lights at them. Don't want to be responsible for causing a smash. Yeah, exactly. That makes a lot of sense. So if you want, I often do that as well. If I'm want to let somebody out or I see somebody's trying to get out, I just kind of slow down, really, really gradually slow down. I leave a nice bit of space for them. Uh, I let them make their own decision. Then I won't give them any hand signals or flashing, and then. When I do that, they are more likely to take more looks or they're more likely to be extra cautious then if I kind of don't give many signals, you know. So that's good advice there from Daniel Wan. Noah Thomas Nyanjq. Hi, Dan. Any thoughts on the move from petrol and diesel to electric in the motor industry? Um, no real thoughts, Noah, to be honest with you. I think I think it's, I think it's great, you know. It's, it's better for the environment. I haven't driven an electric car. Um, I don't think I've. No, I don't think I've driven an electric car, but I'm all for it. I mean, if it's better for the environment, it's that has to be wonderful news, you know. I think that's the way the industry is going gradually. I think we're gradually shifting from diesel to petrol, and then and now from petrol to electric, and all that means as well is that we're probably going to be shifting on a gradual basis from manual, uh, to. Uh, automatic cars which is going to be easier to drive better for the environment so i wouldn't have a, I wouldn't have a great knowledge of electric cars just yet i haven't driven any around like that but i'm all for it i mean if that's the way it's going we just have to embrace it and adapt to it so i say bring it on enigma 47 what's the worst mistake a pupil has ever made in your car well nearly killing a pedestrian to be honest with you i said i think i said that story in the last live stream i was giving lessons to a lady hardy enough now you know she was no spring chicken now but we were coming up but won't name her now because you know she she kind of lives not too far from me <coughs> we're coming up to a pedestrian crossing in a clanard area of wexford and kind of i was doing like a pre i was kind of letting her do her own thing i always try and let people do their own thing like like let them drive and i don't i try not to talk too much because i'd rather let them 
kind of figure things out for themselves for the most part anyway. And I could see this pedestrian crossing the road. The pedestrian was like halfway across the pedestrian crossing. There was like one single crossing. There was no island in the middle. None of that it was like the driver should definitely have stopped um, for the pedestrian. And the poor lady I was in the car with, she literally kept driving and the pedestrian crossing the road ended up looking very shocked and eventually the pedestrian had to put her hands on the bonnet and start and start walking backwards because, and, and I always remember her, she, her eyes went up like this, like that and she said, hey, 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 she steps in and I ended up yanking up the hand. I was in a bit of a, I actually, I never experienced anything like this before. Like I, I've seen a lot of my day. I've seen, I've seen a lot of drivers. I, I've, I've had thousands i say in the car i hadn't come across anything like this i yanked up the handbrake probably a little bit later than i should have to be honest with you because i was just saying like what the hell is happening here i just was not expecting the lady to to the driver i was with to do that so i yanked up the handbrake anyway and eventually we, i, I kind of knew the lady crossing the road as well and she was grand about it and, and i obviously we apologized and all that kind of stuff i think i texted her later and uh she was very nice about it she was very sound about it but uh yeah that was probably the that was probably the the, the most uh, eye opening incident that happened. There's a few few more as well that I could think of, but that would that's the one that definitely uh sticks in my sticks in my mind, yeah. Um Daniel one, will you ever pick me a few straw I love strawberries, Daniel. I had a few strawberries this morning on the old porridge. Uh Wexford strawberries, obviously. We have we have more all Ireland's than e boys have strawberries. Yeah, I tell you for a uh, Kilkenny have so have a lot of all Ireland's. I think they've uh, 30 is it 35 although at the moment now Tip have a great team so they're, I'd say they're, they'll eventually be catching up Corker completely in the doldrums though um, but you can't deny Kilkenny are just like legends at the, at the game of hurling uh, particularly that team from 2000 to 2012 2014 uh, I think they, they, they pick, I'll never forget the 2008 All-Ireland final against Waterford uh, to me that was the absolute uh, peak of that Kilkenny team because they were just I had never seen a destruction of another team like I saw on that All Ireland final in two thousand and eight. It was just almost like the perfect game of hurling if you were Kilkenny. They completely annihilated Waterford and to me that was the peak. I think it probably started to kind of gradually come down after that. Uh, but anyway, we're we're getting on to uh, we're, we're we're I'm here to talk about driving and we're kind of getting distracted by uh, Kilkenny hurling. So, folks, let's check the time here. 25 past four. Yeah, five five or six more minutes, folks, and we're going to have to call it a day. Uh, I'm going to get a good few comments here. I'm going to have to try and fly through the comments to try and catch up. So I'm going to be leaving very, very soon, folks. And again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the great comments. I uh, hope the live stream has helped you. Uh, so let's see. Where were we now? Daniel was the last one anyway, wasn't it? Let me see. I'm just going to catch up here, folks. One sec. Um... Okay. Um. Okay. So Leslie, no, Noah, I did any thoughts on the move? Always, oh, we, we had that. Yep. Worst mistake. Yeah. Pick strawberries. Yeah. Um. Rushi, switching to manual to automatic lessons. My instructor told me they would do two hour lessons as against usual one hour because it's an automatic car. Would it be overkill to do a two hour lesson? I'm not the biggest fan of two hour lessons to be honest with you, folks. Uh, I, I think one hour is better because you can. You know, if if you if you were to do six two hour lessons, I don't think you get the same benefit as doing you know twelve one hour lessons because it's one hour is more spread out. You have more time to reflect on your driving, and sometimes two hours can be a little bit overkill. If it's done occasionally, I don't think it's too bad. I think I think it's fine. Sometimes two hours can work well with someone who needs a bit more intensive work. It just depends. It's up it's up to the instructor to to decide that and you, but. I wouldn't be the biggest fan, generally speaking. I would do occasionally do two hour lessons, particularly if the driver was kind of more advanced. Um, it depends, you know. It, it all depends. The, the thing is to try, it. see how you feel, try it yourself, test it out, and then maybe if it works for you, great. If not, back to one hour. Jim Rennie, hi Dan. I know somebody wants to fail their test on progress. Definitely happens a lot because they stopped on a narrow street to let a funeral pass. The instructor said they were stopped for too long. Yeah. I have made a video on that, uh, I think it's on the video a few months ago, is it 7 driving tips? Um, I think that's what it is anyway. You see, it, it, there's, there's no, there should be no problem stopping, because it's courtesy to stop when there's a funeral there. 
but what once the once the funeral uh car the and the you know the, the first part of the cortege are, are are kind of gone past you you can kind of slowly go away then um it does depend on how big it is but it, it there should not be a problem with stopping uh for the funeral i'm i'm I must kind of ask one of the instructors or one of the testers about that and, and get more, maybe get more information from me. But it, like it can depend on it. I mean, if the tester felt you stopped too long, maybe it, maybe you just stopped too long. I don't think the tester was saying it was wrong to stop. It was just that you stopped too long, maybe until all the the crowd were gone as well. You know, it depends. You see, it it, it does depend. Um, you have to watch out for the person leading the funeral cortege. There, usually dressed in black, they'll kind of usually direct you. If they ask you to pull, they might ask you to pull over or something like that. Uh, Michael DC, I would apply for a test ASAP, though I applied for my test about a year ago before the lessons, after I finished my lessons, got my date two weeks later for a month's time. Good. At least you have a day, honey, man, Michael, and the best of luck to you. Let me know if any questions. Marky, hi then, thanks for the videos. Test on Wednesday, wondering if I can overtake a stopped bus on a continuous white line. Yeah, it should be fine. Just watch out for the oncoming cars. Um, watch out for any pedestrians that could be coming around the front of the bus or the back of the bus and watch out for the bus's indicators if the bus is indicating left fair enough he's he's still stopped but if the bus is indicating right don't bother overtaking him you're better off letting the bus out uh, it is technically okay to do it you just have because it's an obstruction like you can overtake a cyclist or a tractor the same but every situation is different so just be careful watch the bus's indicators though remember now if the bus is indicating right don't bother overtaking Brian Cullen, good to see you do a live stream. Thanks, Brian. Good to be here. This is a new new one. Yeah, kind of. It's my third or fourth one now, but enjoying it. Thanks, Brian. Daniel Wan did my driving test in Opel Insignia. Nice car, yeah. Um, Passed first time. Fantastic driver, you see. Well, thanks for... Yeah, congratulations, Daniel. Fair play to you. Always a great achievement. Tune in next time. Stay safe. You too, Daniel. Thanks for tuning in. Brian Cullen. Hey, everyone. Thank hit hey, hey, everyone. Hit the likes. Yes, thank you, Daniel. Give If you like this, folks... Please hit the like button. That'll help me on YouTube. Appreciate that, Brian Cullen. Kavuri Rajesh, Indian license holders can do... Ah, yes, I wasn't 100% sure on that. Indian license holders can do reduced EDT. So that means you only have to do six lessons um, if that's the case. I know some, I've, I've, I've done that with some people from India and Pakistan, yeah. So, yeah, just check that out with the RSA. They'll, they'll, they'll give you the most up-to-date information. Uh, Kavuri has his test on the 22nd of October. Wish you luck. Of course I wish you luck. The very best luck, Kavuri, <coughs> with your test. Hope it goes well. Uh, best wishes. Check out my videos. Loads of tips there. Cat on the Ridge. Um, thank you so much for all the hard work, making our life easier. Very welcome. You're the best on YouTube. Well, I've been called worse. Your live streams are probably... Thank you very much, Cat, Cat House on the Ridge. What a, what a, what a great name, like... Uh, appreciate that comment, Cat House on the Ridge. David D'Souza, hey then, thanks for the videos. If I park between two cars and too close between the car on the left, do I steer towards the left a little bit <coughs> or on the right reversing out? David, you have to do whatever you think is best there. So if you're if you're parked between two cars, too close between the car, you, may, you might have to reverse and do a quick steer to the left. That'll help get the front out. You, did, you just have to do what you think is best there, you know. Uh, just make sure you're doing everything very slow using clutch control. Uh, very, very slow movement there is, is good advice. And don't forget to check your blind spot moving off. Whatever you do, remember the blind spot. Zane Ali, hi Dane. If I get a full Irish license, can I change to a British license because I will be moving there later on? Well, yeah, to the best of my knowledge, you can. In the UK, they are accept they they will continue to accept and recognize European licenses after the 31st of December. So that should be absolutely fine. There should be no problem there. You should be able to swap that uh, for a British one there. Uh, but just uh, that's the, what I understand now. Just if you you could probably Google that and, and maybe check a UK site to be sure. But I do I do know that uh, in the UK they will be recognizing and accepting European licenses and Irish licenses is a European one. So that should be fine. Uh, best of luck to you, Zane. Daniel Wan, 36 and counting, lad. 36, yeah, I thought it was 35, yeah, 36 all Ireland's, yeah, what an achievement for a county, um, unbelievable. Rushi P, thanks, Dan, really great insights, very welcome, Rushi, best wishes to you. We're getting to the end here now, folks, we're going to have to log off now very, very soon. Uh, last couple of comments, thanks, Dan, really great insights, thank you, Rushi, I think I said that. Live Mo, L-I-V-M-O-O, hi, Dan, can you stop at a junction or lights in third or fourth gear? Yes, you can, there's no real problem stopping in third or fourth gear, um, it's probably better to get down to second gear, though, because... 
the car is probably going to be able to manage a slow speed in the second gear. But if you stop in, in third or fourth gear, it's no problem. Just go straight into first gear then after you've stopped, so you're ready to go off. Great stuff, Dan. Thanks for all this. Very welcome, Leslie. And thank you for uh, thank you for tuning in, Leslie. Okay, folks. So I'll have to call it a day there. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this live stream helped you. Um, it's great for me to be able to come on here and answer your questions, and it's great for you to share your insights as well with me, because it's great to read the comments as well. Another comment here: the exclusive man. Would you recommend any games or apps for practice? Uh, not on game. I wouldn't be the biggest gamer there now. Apps, um, not really. No, I, I don't. I mean, there are apps. There's a learner driver app, isn't there? But I've heard a few recommendations on some of the apps that are not the best and they're not necessarily the most up to date, and they crash and all that. But the honest answer there is, I wouldn't be an expert on any games or apps. No, so I wouldn't uh give you any definitive advice there. Gronia Malone test on Thursday. What do you recommend doing before Thursday? Would you recommend a pre-test on the day? Absolutely, Gronia Malone. I would strongly recommend if you have a test on Thursday, say at two o'clock, you do a lesson at one o'clock or 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 twelve forty-five, whatever. Do a lesson the hour before because I think it'll help get you in the zone. It'll help get you focused. Would strongly recommend that. I always say to people, three lessons is great. One the hour before the test. And then a few more then uh, in the same week of the test is a really, really good good idea. So if you watch my videos, if you read your notes, if you have notes, I always get people to write notes after the lesson. Donation there from Sheila, I'll get to that in a sec. Um, so practice, read over your notes, watch my videos. Let me know, Grania Malone, if you have any questions, if you have any uh, queries about driving, let me know. And the best look on Thursday, let me know how you get on. Uh, Lim Livmo, thanks, Dan. You're a star. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate that, Limvo. The exclusive man, cheers. You're very welcome. Sheila Lahi, then. Five euro. Sheila, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Uh, that will probably be my last super chat of the day. Uh, really generous, Sheila. Really appreciate your support, folks. Thanks a million for the for the kind comments and for the donations by PayPal or here, like Sheila on super chat. Really appreciate it. Thanks again. Uh, Grania, thanks a million. You're very welcome, Grania. You're you're probably just tuning in at the wrong time and just finishing up here now, Grania. But you can still comment for a minute or two more, I think, if you want. And as I said, any questions, any of my YouTube videos, throw in a comment. You can email me at daintai at gmail.com. Mark Fitz then. Uh, I'll be careful rolling up in third fork here. I got marked down for it last week. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I don't recommend it. I, I mean, it's it's you can do it. But if the car starts struggling or... You know, starts chugging or something like that. It's not not a good look. Like this is why you you know prevention is better than cure. Don't 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 be stopping in third and fourth gear. If it's better to be stopping, you're better off stopping in second gear, and that, that way the car is better able. As I said to you a few moments ago, the car is better able to handle a slow speed at second gear. I mean, second gear is designed for like twenty kilometers. You know what I mean? Like third and fourth gear is not designed for twenty kilometers. You should you shouldn't be stopping in third and fourth gear. But if you do and you maintain control, it shouldn't be a problem. But if you stop in third or fourth gear and the car starts making a bit of jerky noise, it's not going to be good, you know. It shouldn't be serious, like, but it's not going to be. It's not going to be ideal. Uh, you still passed on Mark Fitz. Good man yourself. Fair play to you. As we say, Australia Cordicus. Congratulations. Um, probably the last comment. Cat House Under Ridge. Have a great weekend. Oh, what a what a comment to finish off on. Thank you very much, Cat House Under Ridge. Thank you for that and thanks for the support. Okay, folks. Probably call it a day there. Um, hope to upload another video next week. Um, I'll be live again next Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. 